October 12th and day 12 of Occupy Los Angeles. You're watching Inside Out News. We have the right to hold on. All this resolution does is say that we got to bring the banking responsibility ordinance before the council so that we can vote on this. To, to the people. So, so we said we put into the resolution the date of October 28th. Now I recognize that's just around the corner, but it's been a year and a half since since that matter was was uh, since the ordinance was prepared. So I'm willing to, to extend that uh, to uh, November and even mid-December if we get a commitment from the chair to present it to us. That's all I'm asking. If we do that, then fine. Today, the City Council voted unanimously to pass Resolution 33. The resolution was first proposed by City Council members Richard Alarcone and Bill Rosenthal to show support for the protesters here who are sleeping, living, and protesting on the lawn surrounding City Hall in downtown Los Angeles. A whereas clause in Resolution 3 mentions another bill called the Responsible Banking Ordinance. This resolution, this bill, according to Huffington Post, has been in committee for over a year without any sign of it going up for a vote with the entire council. Today, the council decided that they would discuss the resolution on November 21st, and then later on in the week, it would be brought to the attention of the full council for a discussion. However, they were not able to set a date for voting on the actual bill. It appears that the difference of opinion is that Mr. Alicorn would like to have this ordinance brought before the council by the 15th of December. Mr. Parks indicates that due to scheduling that he commits that the committee will hear this in you no know, on or about November 21st. If the two of you can't come to some agreement, then it's going to be very difficult for us to have the move forward and have this discussion. So I would suggest this: Why don't we pass this resolution? And why no 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 no? Why don't we pass this resolution? And where it relates to have it before this full city council on such a date, why don't you change that to say, have the preliminary discussion on that date so that the CAO's office can come to us and as a full council discuss what they discussed in budget and finance on November 21st. So it's not that you would take an action per se Mr. Parks on that day, but this council would be given all of the information that you uh, have been given. And I think that's the way we can move forward and move forward now. I think that's fair to all parties concerned. Lieutenant Dan Choi visited Occupy Los Angeles today, talking informally with the protesters and then giving a rousing speech to the people who gathered for the General Assembly that is currently going on behind me. Lieutenant Dan Choi is known for his activism against Don't Ask, Don't Tell. He was a former member, member of the military who was discharged for, for openly stating that he is gay. He gave a very rousing speech saying that don't ask, don't tell is not something that is just happening in the military, but as he said, in, in the hearts and the minds of people and that, that, that the people need to release themselves from this type of oppression. I was able to do a brief interview with him earlier in the day and I asked him a few questions about what he was doing here and about the movement. And what brings you to Occupy Los Angeles? Well, I believe we need to stand up and be counted in this time when the most disenfranchised and the most forgotten in our society are uh, ignored by the most powerful. Uh, there's no other option for us than to stand on our feet. But it's better to stand up on our feet than to be on our knees begging. 
And I think when we do stand up and we put our entire system of government on notice that they need to represent the entirety of our country, then we're doing something for the entirety, not only of America, but for the entire world. You know, I think Joe Biden recently uh, said that the occupiers are similar to the Tea Party. Do you think that is an accurate assessment of the, assessment of the people here and what you've seen so far? I think Joe Biden has some nice, pretty teeth, but I think there's a, there's a, a assessment that is riddled with cavities. I think when you compare what the Tea Party was trying to do, that manufactured uh, political organization, which led to uh, elections and uh, electioneering, as well as uh, just further power uh, and continuance of the, uh, the pursuit of power, uh, you recognize that the Tea Party for which the Tea Party was named, the Boston Tea Party, was, was the actual rising of people against a under or misrepresentation. Uh, the Tea Party of today was not like those who threw the tea over the board of the ships. They were the bags of tea themselves because they were used by those. Uh, the people in the Tea Party uh, were those who also felt disenfranchised, they felt that the government was forcing some policies down on them, and they were afraid for their families and for their communities. In that, uh, we are also afraid for our entire community and for all of our families. This is similar to the Tea Party in that we are standing up. However, this is not a manufactured uh, grassroots. This is not AstroTurf. This is an actual movement and it is a revolution where you're seeing people standing up for themselves instead of waiting for others and those who caution us patients are not being listened to anymore and that is what we do here we put all of our government on notice we say that the moral ascendancy of the idea of america has hit new lows because uh, when you look at the arab spring when you look at what happens in greece and in london with the austerity measures uh, with the corruption and the bribery when you take a look at the banks that are being bailed out, when you take a look at the immorality of helping the uh, one percent of our country to own more than ninety percent, you know, the, I don't know what kind of moral ascendancy we have preserved, and so it is our responsibility to be here. It's not that we want to be here; is that we need to be here. And what do you think is the end for the rev this revolution that you speak of? When? Will the demands, the, the wants of the people who are protesting, when will that be met and how will it be met, in your opinion? The needs are being met in the process itself. People are being fed, people are being taken care of, people are engaging in conversations with others who will listen, people are receiving health care, people are building community. The demands have not been quantified yet, they have not been underscored or written on parchment yet, uh, but that's not a major concern. Corporate media might say it's a major concern because it doesn't seem like there are specific platforms as if this was just supposed to be any other humdrum political manufactured movement. This is a true movement where we brought people together in a general assembly where people can speak their mind and through that chaos, through that dissidence, through the disagreements and through the speaking up, we'll find out what those needs are, what the, what the true extent of the damage is. And so this is very similar to the Constitutional Convention in that people are coming together and they might not all have the same agenda, they might not all have the same experience, but by coming together, we trust the fact that a community that takes care of each other first and foremost will come up with the solutions for each other. With all of the police action happening across the country, I was curious to know what the protesters felt about the unique cooperation that they have here in Los Angeles with the Los Angeles Police Department versus the lack of cooperation, so to speak, that we have seen in other parts of the country. 
whenever you start a business, they tell you the most important factor is location, location, location. And right here, we're in LA, the media, media capital of the world. And everybody pretty much, they will watch us and pay attention to us if we have a platform. So the police, they, they don't want to give us no platform because they're masters at propaganda. And so since they're masters, they already know that if they throw negative energy on us, it would only expand us and give us a bigger platform. More people would want to learn about us and know what, where we stand. And so the police, they learn from Hollywood. And, and like what they say in Hollywood, no, no publicity is, is bad publicity. I'm not an insider whether there's something uh, going be on behind that. What about your perspective as a European? Uh, I'm sure you've had protests happen in, in Germany and you've witnessed things of that nature. What about, can you comment in regard to the way the police are in Germany versus the police here in terms of handling large protests? Um, I, I think that the police is, uh, we're more used to have conflicts with police all the time. You know, on every 1st of May we have uh, big tanks coming and like uh, cars burning and so on, no big deal. Um, but. Um, like I'm, I'm, I'm very much reminded, I must say, um, of, of the protests we had uh, before the wall came down. You know, it was just a, a few hundred people, and um, and lots of um, signs l like this, and nobody would have thought we could change anything. You know, and uh, and then within a f two months, it was a few hundred thousand, and um, and the whole system, which uh, seemed to be so solid, like with a, with a big military and everything, just change. I think that everybody, all the organizers have done a really great job in coordinating the city officials, is, um, what it seems like. Not that I know, you know how that went down in New York or Boston, I don't want to say that they didn't do a good job doing that. But also, just the way that we've been working with City Hall and today, you know, they went to the city council and got them to kind of issue a statement of support for the occupation, which is amazing. And it seems like there's a good attitude towards the police and, and like, kind of, it's a good relationship, which is really impressive because, you know, the LAPD doesn't always have such a good reputation and I'm glad that they have handled things the way they have. I think it's to their credit, to their benefit, and it has really, I think, highlighted LA, um, Occupy LA in the country. Many people had Monday off in observance of Christopher Columbus Day. Today is actually the Christopher Columbus Day and there was a lot of action across the city in protest to what Christopher Columbus represents, in particular to the indigenous populations of North America. A group of Aztec dancers came by the protesters today and did a performance. I went, up over, I went over to them to ask them a few questions about why they were protesting and what they thought about Occupation Los Angeles. I, I saw uh, your group over the weekend, you were performing over by Occupy LA. Do you guys have any uh, informal connections with the indigenous community that is part of Occupy LA? Yeah, yeah actually they invite us and uh, we said uh, um, with uh, all the, the indigenous nations, we can occupy our land as occupied. We are a people of occupied people. Uh, we are on occupied land and we can uh, say that we are against any kind of occupation. And, um, but we, we understand that the people has uh, certain needs and they need to, 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 to struggle to, for the rights because the rights are for the rights of the children. If they don't protect, defend those rights, they are not going to be rights for the children. There's, there's going to be no rights for the human, the humanity. So we understand that uh, it's important. Uh, we just don't agree with the name, but uh, you know, it's the name. But, um, but uh, because we, rec we understand that uh, talking about occupying, we are the occupies. We are the, the, this is occupied land, this is occupied land. So every year, every year on October the 12th, shine or rain, we're out here uh, walking in memory of the indigenous people, but uh, not just uh, for the indigenous that pass, for the indigenous that are coming for, for, uh, to keep that flower alive. 
this ends our broadcast for tonight. We will be back here tomorrow once again to report on the events as they unfold. This is Margot Paez signing off for Inside Out News. Good night.